just on the break here, we got a question on our YouTube channel asking, what are the chances are that Powell redefines the targeted inflation level? And, you know, it's interesting because the Federal Reserve has been unable to create inflation. This was the whole idea is that the Fed could cut rates. We could do all the stimulus and that would ultimately lead to inflationary pressures. And it hasn't as we've actually had more deflation, according to the Fed measures, than actual inflation. And so, the, and, but again, the inflation that the government's talking about and your inflation rate are two very different things. Your inflation rate, housing, college costs, insurance costs, healthcare costs, you know, none of that's actually measured the way that, that it actually impacts, you know, the, the real American. And, and this is why when you take a look at the average savings rate for most Americans, it's low to negative. Most Americans are just basically trying to make ends meet, try to, you know, pay for their food, pay for their family, keep, you know, kind of keep things going, kind of keep the balls all up in the air, so to speak. Um, and, and so there's, a, there's always this question about will the Fed actually start to change the way we measure inflation to try to get to this targeted inflation rate that they want? And the reality is, is that it's, it's more complicated than that, and it's unlikely that the Fed is going to try to start changing targeted inflation rates um, anytime soon because there's nothing really for them at this moment uh, to actually create that change. In other words, do they need to change it at this point? The, the target inflation rate's running about their target. It's not uh, too far below that right now. So there's no pressure on the Fed to start redefining their targeted inflation level at this point. doesn't mean they can't, but there's not a lot of incentive to do that, um, particularly when they've got bigger issues on their hand right now, particularly with what's happening with this overnight funding crisis that's been going on now for about two months. And we've talked about that. We actually touched on that this weekend's newsletter. If you don't really understand what's going on, there's actually a, a very important kind of backdrop that's happening. The Federal Reserve has been in kind of emergency funding mode now for the last month to make sure that banks have enough capital to meet requirements, funding requirements on an overnight basis. Now, these are fully collateralized loans. But the rates on these loans have, have, have skyrocketed. And so it clearly suggests that there's stress somewhere in the financial system. Um, the question is nobody knows exactly where it is and why all of a sudden banks have come up short on needing access to funding. Um, so that's kind of the bigger issue right now. And so it's, it's you know, the question of inflation and targeted inflation. Uh, we've talked about nominal GDP targeting and a variety of other things. There's been lots of talk about how to kind of reconfigure things. And the idea is, is always to lower the rate of inflation, right? So we always want lower rates of inflation. And of course, that lowers the requirement on Social Security payments, et cetera. So while the, your real cost of living is going up, the fact that we keep you know, adjusting and jiggering with the way we calculate inflation to make it go lower so we can pay you less money in terms of Social Security payments is has is, is always been the goal. And that started really in the, in the late 90s, and that's been going on ever since. So I wouldn't really put too much concern about that right now. The bigger issue is on Wednesday when the Fed announces their rate cuts is going to be, you know, really what they say about future rate cuts. That's going to be the thing, right? Are they going to keep cutting rates here? Are they concerned about what's going on? And again, that's a little bit hard to, to suggest that they're concerned about much when stock prices are, are at record highs. Or is the markets completely missing what's going on? Is there something else that's going on that the markets simply aren't paying attention to? And uh, is that going to be kind of a realization point for stocks? So there is some risk to Wednesday. So, you know, keep a close watch on your portfolio. And make sure that, uh, you know, you have some, some measures of protection in place because things could turn very quickly um, with just a wrong word, a wrong statement, something that, you know, the, the markets aren't expecting him to say. Um, etc. So I don't expect that to happen, right? But there's always the possibility. So just kind of make sure that you've got some idea. The Federal Reserve has been having to do a, a funding issue. They've been having to provide liquidity to major banks. We got a question um, on our YouTube channel 
Uh, by the way, if you aren't getting our YouTube channel, um, you can go by our website, uh, realinvestmentadvice.com, click on the YouTube link and subscribe, and we'll email you all of our podcasts, YouTubes. We have, we have tons of stuff there for you. Uh, you can also ask questions on the show. <laughs> so if you're watching our live stream on YouTube, you can uh, ask questions. Uh, the question is, uh, is, regardless of how the repo issue started, do you think uh, big banks are concluding to pull off a reverse bank robbery on the Fed? Um, that's an, actually an interesting kind of statement, but the issue with the Federal Reserve and what's going on, we covered this in this weekend's newsletter, is that when banks need to, they have, they have what's called excess reserves, right? So the bank has reserves that they can draw on to do overnight funding purchases, et cetera. And this is part of the fact that we do fractional reserve banking. Uh, banks only keep a very small fraction of reserves on hand for the amount of stuff that they've got outstanding. Uh, you don't have a you, you, if you've got a savings account at the bank, there's no money in your account at the bank. There's a ledger entry for how much money you have in your savings account, but there's no money actually there. That money's been lent out, used, etc. And to a fractional basis, there's a small fraction of of your money at the bank. And so when you show up to make a demand withdrawal, the bank has to, to meet that obligation. If they don't have the cash on hand, they've got to borrow it overnight until they get the cash re resettled back in. So this is this whole overnight lending action that's going on. And normally they borrow overnight at, uh, at a very low rate and that it's all OK and it's fully collateralized. They have to put up treasuries or uh, collateral for these for these loans on an overnight basis. So fully collateralized and, you know, it goes off at a very low interest rate. Well, all of a sudden, they're having to put up collateral to a, a very large degree, and they're paying 6 7 8% interest rates on overnight money. It's, it's, it's insane. And it suggests that there's a problem within the financial system and that the Federal Reserve is having to come in and provide liquidity for these banks on an overnight basis. Shouldn't be happening. But all of a sudden, it is. And as we address in our newsletter, if you go to our website, realinvestmentadvice.com, click on the newsletter link, we actually covered this. Our th suspicion is, is that there is a banking problem um, somewhere. And, you know, we've talked about the issue of Deutsche Bank. They're one of the largest banks in the world. They're about four times the size of Lehman. They've got about $400 trillion worth of derivatives on their books. And they are the largest number of U.S banking locations of a foreign bank in the U.S. So there is a lot of, of potential risk to the financial community because of a bank like Deutsche Bank. And they have, and remember what the, the problem with Lehman was when Lehman went bankrupt, the problem was is the counterparty risk. All of a sudden, nobody was willing to do business with Lehman and everybody really kind of stopped doing business with anybody else. And so the whole credit market froze up and that's what caused a big problem with the financial markets was this freezing up of, of the credit markets. And that's the risk of Deutsche Bank. If Deutsche Bank goes belly up and their and their price of their stock is really pretty much tracking the price of Lehman heading into the financial crisis, the risk is the counterparty risk. They're a huge counterparty player with all the major banks in the world. So all of a sudden, if there's a financial problem, again, they're about four times the size of Lehman, it's a problem. And it's a big problem. And so the question becomes, is the Fed very quietly bailing out a bank? I'm not saying it is Deutsche Bank. I'm using Deutsche Bank as, as a kind of a, a reference point because it's potentially the problem. But it could be somebody else. And the Fed's having to step in and provide liquidity to try to ensure that the, the financial markets continue to operate functionally. So our suspicion is, is that this isn't simply overnight tax payments. Those are past us. That there's another problem and that it's a credit related it's a credit related financial risk problem that the Fed is trying to ensure there's enough liquidity for to try to prevent after after Lehman this is front front and foremost on their mind this is not to have another Lehman type event they don't want that so they could be acting and our suspicion is is they are acting in advance to try to stem off a problem that exists um, we won't know until later. We'll, we'll find out later if, if they're successful. We'll find out two ways. Either something's going to bust and we'll have another Bear Stearns or a Lehman type event. Or, you know, after a year or so, we'll figure out, we'll be told that, oh, yeah, there was this big problem, but we bailed out the bank and it's all fine and it's all good. Don't worry about it. You never knew what was happening. But I'm sure that we're going to find out down the road that there was a problem that had to be dealt with, and, and that's what's going on now. So we'll see.